We don't know what's at the center of a black hole. Now, in general relativity, which is our theory of black holes, it's how we understand black holes to exist, general relativity says that the center of a black hole is a singularity. It's a point that is infinitely small, is a literal geometric point. And it's the place where all the matter that formed the black hole, all the matter that has ever fallen into the black hole, reaches, it goes, squeezes down and down and down because gravity keeps pulling in and nothing can push out and resist that. So it just compacts down to a literal, infinitely tiny point. We know that this is wrong. We know that the presence of the singularity in the mathematics of general relativity when it comes to describing black holes, the existence of that singularity is showing us that the math breaks down, that we are doing something wrong, that general relativity can tell us about the existence of black holes, the behavior of black holes, but it can't tell us what's happening in the center. To describe what's happening in the center, to really understand what that singularity is requires a new theory of gravity. It requires a quantum theory of gravity because the singularity is a place where there's very, very strong gravity at very, very tiny scales. We do not understand the physics of very strong gravity at very tiny scales. This is where quantum gravity would take over, where if we had a theory that united quantum mechanics, which is our theories of the very small, with general relativity, with, which is our understanding of gravity, if we were to somehow connect those and unify those, we would have an understanding of strong gravity at small scales, and we would have an understanding of what the heck is happening at a singularity. One idea very theoretical, very hypothetical idea of what is happening at the center of a black hole instead of a singularity comes from an attempt at quantum gravity known as loop quantum gravity. Loop quantum gravity says that space and time are discrete says that the, the fundamental fabric of reality is not a smooth, continuous sheet. Like, it appears that motion in our universe and our flow through time is as smooth as silk, but really, what according to loop quantum gravity, it's made up of tiny little chunks that if you zoomed way, way, way in and looked at motion, it wouldn't be smooth like this. It'd be chunk, 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 and that our motion through time would be snapshot, 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 snapshot. It, this can potentially work because these tiny little discrete chunks of space and time are at such a tiny scale that everything up to and including subatomic physics looks perfectly smooth. But once you get down to the Planck scale, the Planck scale is around 10 to the minus 35 meters. So, you know, small that's where you start to see this chunkiness of space and time. Now, loop quantum gravity is not a fully fleshed out theory of physics. It has not made any predictions. It has not yet even been solved beyond, hey, wouldn't this be a cool idea? But if loop quantum gravity or ideas like loop quantum gravity are correct, if space and time are discrete, this can prevent the formation of a singularity. Because as the matter tries to squeeze down, it runs into this fundamental limit that nothing can be smaller than the Planck length. And, and so this puts a fundamental limit of how small things can get. This creates a, a repulsion. This creates a force that resists matter, that resists the gravitational collapse of matter at the very, very smallest scales. And so instead of a singularity, you have what's called a Planck star. Now, this Planck star is not stable because that is a repulsive force. Like matter tries to squeeze down, but then the fundamental nature of space and time says, no, you're not getting smaller than this. And so there's going to be a bounce. So in loop quantum gravity, in the viewpoint of Planck stars, uh, these black holes or these Planck stars do not live forever. They eventually explode. They look like black holes for a very, very long time. They eventually explode, but because of the extreme time dilation, because of the, the gravity there, uh, 
even though in the perspective of the infalling material reaching the center, it happens in a blink of an eye, from our perspective, it can take billions, hundreds of billions, or even trillions of years. So in loop quantum gravity, we expect Planck stars to eventually blow up. We expect black holes to eventually blow up. This will look different than the Hawking radiation that you may have heard of before, but it's going to take a long time. But massive caveat, we don't know if loop quantum gravity is correct. We don't know if loop quantum gravity is on the road to connect correctness. We don't know if space and time are discrete. We don't know if even if space and time are discrete, we've got all the math right and that Planck stars do exist because remember, the existence of Planck stars depends on loop quantum gravity, but loop quantum gravity is now fully fleshed out theory of physics. So like you have to make a lot of assumptions in order to get Planck stars right. For the time being, as far as we can tell, Planck stars would look and act and smell like black holes. And so you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. We do know that something is at the center of a black hole that is not the singularity. It could be a Planck star. I don't know check back in a few hundred billion years. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to help keep me doing this stuff. And I'll see you next time.